Hello, today I want to show you the bus and how 10 people live in it. My name is Michael. M-I-C-H-A-E-L. My parents are deaf. I'm Coda. So, I want to show you how to live in a bus. With 10 people. Come on in. First, when you come in, you can see there's a shoe shelf. It keeps things organized, keeps things clean, and it keeps things neat. Come on in. When you first come in, you, you see the driver's area. Both my wife and I drive the bus. The view is beautiful when you're going through the mountains, on the prairies, the ocean. It's such an amazing view. Okay, so 10 people can sit on the couches. And we have seat belts tucked under the cushions. When we're parked at an RV, we tuck away all the seat belts and hide them under the cushions. The driver has a seat belt and also the 10 passengers have seat belts, five on each side. This is where we eat and uh, we set up a table, a nice long table down the middle. Also, we have visitors coming sleep two people on each one on each side couch becomes a bed by pulling the bottom section slat Once you pull that out and drop the back cushion it becomes a bed if you had small children you could probably fit up to four we don't do that we leave it the living space as the couches and right here is our bookshelf Sit here with a coffee, tea, or whatever your favorite drink may be. Chat. Very bright in here. I was raised by deaf parents, and if you know, it's always bright. They require brightness. And these are the lights. Down both sides. You can imagine it's very, very bright at night time. People are looking and wondering what is going on. For brightness, the wood, the lightness. Going to a restaurant that's dark, you know, deaf people never do that because it's very hard to communicate in the dark. And that's growing up, I was very used to that. I'm hearing, but I'm still used to that. So if I see a darkly lit restaurant, I don't usually want to go there. For the sweaters, hats. During the winter, cold weather we'll put, and in the summer when you need lighter gear, that can go there as well. Musical instruments, guitar, violin. We have eight children, and they have different musical interests. My father helped me build the cabinetry. Growing up, Dad worked making sailboats, and he did cabinetry, so he was able to help me build this. A piano in the kitchen. So here we have the bowls, the plates, the cups, and all the other things. We have forks, different tools, knives. We 
Here we have the cookbooks, vitamins. Teas, spices, salt, pepper. This is a must have in the US South. Okay, we have a five burner cook stove. Very fancy. On the bus we have 10 people, so we cook a lot. And all most of the time on the bus, we're cooking, eating, enjoying, conversing, music, everything. So we don't have an oven. Instead, we have the countertop toaster oven. We can do small baking, maybe a small chicken, you know, small things. If we need something bigger, we do have a Dutch oven. We have the pots, pans. We also have a crock pot. And oils are stored in there as well. My wife requires her sewing machine. So sewing machine, fabrics, we got a serger. She's a crazy woman. Here we have seeds, nuts, And that is our Tupperware drawer. The Vitamix, we always have to have it. For the dish sink, we have a double. There's always lots of dishes. You know, sometimes we'll use disposable, but we try to use less waste. The refrigerator is a full-size residential refrigerator. It is not an RV fridge. Full size. We have meats and plenty of room for ice cream. This is our water filter. You fill from the top, it filters through to the bottom. You'll notice in RV parks, the water tastes funny. It's like a bleach, chemicals. So this reduces that flavor and makes it more enjoyable. Different RV parks have strict rules set out by the towns and cities that require them to add lots of bleach. And we will try to keep the chemicals out of our body. That's why we use that. Also, we have our fruit racks. We caught a rat. We were wondering how on earth the fruit was being chewed. And we thought, how is a mouse getting up there? Finally, we found it was a rat climbing up. How? How? I have, honestly, I don't have any idea. But we did catch the rat. Bye-bye. This is our two-in-one washer dryer. It's included in one. It's a six-hour high efficiency. Sorry, my spelling. Efficiency uses less water, but it has a long running time. Just a, it's just a plug. Uh, it's ventless, so it's nice. These are very popular in Europe and also in Asia. Um, the US and Canada is starting to purchase them more. Here we have our clothing setup for each kid. That's it. That's it for clothing, that's all. We have less clothing. So when one shirt gets worn out, we donate it and we buy new. And we replace and we replace. We don't let it build up and get out of control. And here's our pantry. We got onions, we got canned goods, we got fruit. Uh, also, this is our homeschooling materials. Books, writing, pencils. Up here we have towels. These are called Turkish towels. They're small, compact, and they fit 
10 towels easily. So it uses less space in the cupboard. It dries fast. Is it super absorbent? Um, you know, it's okay. But it fits in our small space perfectly. Here we have our cast iron frying pans. Okay, so now that was the front. Now we want to show you the back where we sleep and where the bathroom is. Okay, so when it's bedtime, we hook up the curtain and that divides the space, keeps it dark in the back and we can keep it a little brighter in the front while the kids are in bed and we can still hang out. And this is the hook, simply hooks on like so. Love you. Love you. Okay, so these are the first beds, the oldest children. This is Toby, T-O-B-Y. So each kid has a bookshelf with an outlet. So for gaming and uh, music, iPods. So this is the hallway light. Also we do have a outlet for vacuuming and whatnot. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six. So the kids have lots of room to play. You can see the headspace. Lots of room to move around and play and read and toys and Lego. Barbies, games. We got fun lights. So each kid has their own creativity. And finally, the parent's sleeping area. It's not so fancy. Simply climb into bed. Plus, we have another bunk above the feet. And that is his bed. He sleeps in there. Clothing, the parents' clothing is on that back shelf. So we also have fans. These can be used while driving the bus. They open towards the rear so you can Reverse the flow of air whichever direction you want, depending on your needs, whether it's hot or cold. And it's also remote controlled. And for fun, we'll pop open the emergency hatch. It's an emergency escape. So all the windows can open. In the, in the event of an emergency, if there was a fire or any kind of emergency, every single window can open and become an emergency escape. Okay, so now we're gonna show you the bathroom, the toilet. So this is the, like a farm barn style door. So the shower, The wood we use is cedar. It's uh, water resistant. This is the shower. Hot and cold water. Also, we have the tap for the children for brushing your teeth or washing. I don't ever use it, but the kids use it. During a shower, we'll just push that tap to the side. And this is how we set up our shower curtain.
It's like a holiday, you know, a little luau on the beach. And now the toilet. This is called a compost toilet. Recyclable. It diverts or divides the poop from the pee. The pee goes into the front, diverts away to the gray tank, and then to the sewer connection. And the poop goes straight down into the bucket. And when you're finished at the bathroom, you just grab a handful of the sawdust and throw that on top of the poop. And that reduces the smell. If a kid uh, misses or makes a mess, it's very easy to clean up. Just a quick wipe. And that's it. Okay, so now we want to show you the under storage of the bus. The water, the electricity, how does that work? The propane gas. So the first bay is probably considered like the garage and storage. Take a look. Okay, so there's eight batteries, 100 amp hours each. If we're not in an RV park, say we're on a farm or on federal land, free camping, we can use our batteries. When we're at an RV park and we can plug into the shore power, we run sh that runs straight to the uh, 30 amp breaker. Most buses run about a 50 amp. We built this bus and put 30. At the time in Canada, we never thought we'd deal with the heat and really need the extra ACs. But in the south, it's so hot, we probably should have done 50, but 30 is good enough. So when we're using the batteries, we have to transfer over to the inverter. That changes the, the batteries, 12 volts, to 120 volts AC. Okay? All right, we're gonna show you the other side, the hot water tank. We're gonna show you on the other side how the hot water tank works and also the propane tanks. So this hot water tank is on demand, meaning it's not constantly boiling and the temperature going up and down. When you call for hot water, it knows you want hot water and ignites the gas. When you turn off the hot water, the gas shuts off, saving you money. It only boils when you call for the hot water. It's never boiling. It is tankless. So I want to show you how that works with no tank. So inside that chamber is the fire. And cold water enters the copper tubing at the bottom, wraps around that firebox. As it travels through and around and up, by the time it gets to the top, it comes out hot. And that's how that works. It exhausts through the floor and under the bus. And we'll take a look at that. We have two 30-pound propane tanks. 
They last forever. We're only using it for cooking and hot water. We don't use it for heating the bus or like a furnace system. We have um, little space heaters. This is just cooking and hot water. These are the tools and um, different things. Spare parts. All right, it is hot out. Oh, it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Very hot. I'm sweating. So that's the utility and garage. The middle bay is more just storage. It's like three by three. We can fit, you know, nine to 10 boxes comfortably. This is more long-term storage. This is not daily use, okay? So we'll have winter clothes during the summer in there, and then summer clothes in there, we'll, we'll swap out depending on the season. Also, our sewing fabric, lots of different things. This is the diesel fill. Seven hundred liters, or a hundred and ninety-two gallons. You can imagine it's very expensive to fill it up. Recently, I filled it up for five dollars a gallon, so I spent five hundred dollars for a hundred gallons of diesel. This is the battery for the bus. And this is the last storage bay. It's storage, but it's also where our fresh water tank and gray water tank is kept. Hopefully you can see this. On the top is the gray, it's the kitchen, it's the shower, it's a uh, gray waste. And also our urine as I explained earlier with the urine diverter. So that's the plumbing. The first one is the washer, the first trap. The second trap is the shower. And the final one is the toilet. So that all connects together and drops into the gray tank and to the sewer. On the bottom is the fresh water so when we have no hookups to the RV park, we can use that freshwater tank with the pump. That is another filter. So we have extra, an extra filter. So we have that filter, plus we do our drinking water in the Berkey. Also here we put our bicycles, our sporting equipment, hockey sticks, baseball bats, bicycles, my golf clubs, all that fits in there. I'm going to show you the other side and show you the water hookup and also the drain hose. It is hot! Here I'm just um, storing my an extra seat out of the van. We needed it out so that we had room for groceries and just needing more space in the van. But anyways, that's the gray tank again on the top. It exits out here and uh, we just slide on the RV waste hose. This is homemade. I ordered the tanks and then attached the fittings myself with a friend's help. So that closes the flow. It's not a lock-on like an RV. This whole bus was homemade. I built it myself with some help from my father and from friends. So 
this is how we decided to uh, do it. It's a 220 liter tank. Gallons, that's probably like 80 gallons. I think 80, roughly. And the fresh water fill up is right here. We just take that fitting off and grab our water hose and fill it up. So if we do have RV hookups again, that hose runs up through the floor and to that connection. And we have city water pressure. So that's it. The power runs under the bus. I should say the power cord. And also that one runs up through the floor and straight to the breaker panel. All right, thank you for watching. Like, comment, share with your friends and family the full ASL tour of the bus. I hope to include more ASL in our vlogs. Also, we're trying our best to include more ASL. My family is learning ASL. They're not experts. I sign pretty good, but the children, they're okay, they're good. And my wife is learning more as well. They're all hearing, so, but we're trying to encourage more ASL. All right, love you. Thank you.